Good morning. This is Jason Dean coming live at you again for another Film Fanatic show. Hope everyone's doing good. So it is uh, Thursday at about 12.18. Uh, another beautiful day here in the mid-coast. It's, uh, weather's been pretty, pretty fabulous lately. We luckily have not had, uh, you know, all of the rain that, uh, we were having, but it's been pretty dry, drier, so it's been beautiful, beautiful summer days. Even though, still got a couple more weeks, so it's technically summer, but it's been pretty awesome. So, yeah, I um, have been doing lots of shows lately on uh, lots of new movies that I've been buying. I had two, two big hauls a few weeks ago. Going to the big sale at Opera House Video, my favorite video shop. Well, the only shop, the only video shop you can technically go to. So, they do these two big sales. They usually do it every, like, two big sales. Uh, the last couple of years, they've done it, I guess, almost two years now. And they usually do it two or three times a year where they have these big street sales of like lots of movies that they have that they've acquired that they just don't have the space for so i they had one about two weeks ago or so and got a whole bunch of great movies and then that weekend i went up to bangor and went up to bull moose so i've been buying all kind of, i bought a bunch of cool movies so lately all of the shows have been about these movies so so yeah and uh one big announcement that i'm actually very excited about as far as uh my in regards to my band quantum we um we've been uh playing quite a bit this year it's been really fun we played quite a few shows at hey sailor which is a local venue here in Searsport. We had a lot of shows there this year, which was great for the fall, or I should say winter into the spring. So it's been great keeping the band active. And then we've been um, also, uh, last week we played at this really great barn, barn party. It was a, a barn show in Belfast, and that was really, really, really super fun. We played with this local band. They were also the hosts. Osmia, which is a band that's based right here in Belfast. Really great band, really great indie rock uh, sound with like definitely a punk edge and some electronic, a lot of dissidents, very sonic youthish. Uh, great band, really great band, great dudes, and they were the hosts of this party, and we played a show there. And so I just got confirmation on a couple of other quantum shows for the summer. One will be in July and one will be in August. And we're going to be doing a couple of shows at Opera House Video. The My good friend Dennis Howard, who runs, who owns and runs the, the video shop. And like I said, Opera House Video is the only ve video rental place in the entire state, which is crazy in this day and age, this day of uh, streaming. But they have been able to be pretty steadfast and... and uh, Hold on to what they have. They have a great, you know, local community that supports them, myself included. And they also have, um, you know, deep roots. They've been around forever since I, you know, first came up to Maine many, many years ago. They were here. It's had few owners since then, but they've been able to persevere and somehow adapt to this, uh, to these crazy times with places coming and going. And so I have a long history with, 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 Opera House Video. I also, a few years back, I used to, I started writing reviews for for them through, uh, for Film Fanatic. And I've done lots of, uh, you know, collaborations with Dennis Howard with Opera House Video. So, during a few weeks, about a month ago, they had the All Roads Festival, which is a big uh, kind of indie rock music festival that is in Belfast, and it goes for about two days, Friday and Saturday, they usually have it set up where they have multiple venues. And one of the venues that they tried, and Dennis actually kind of did it more himself, the owner of Opera House Video, he turned his uh, venue, 
uh, turned the store into a music venue, and they had music during the day on Saturday, and I guess it was pretty successful. They were pretty happy, and, and Dennis and I had been talking about, um, we were talking about that one day, and then he was saying how he is uh, really kind of wanting to, to do music there, and to have, uh, he thought the first time they did it was a good success, and he wants to like, you know, dive into that deeper, you know, you know, so we've been talking about it. So we're going to do a couple of shows there, which I'm kind of excited about one in July and one in August. And it's going to be an early, early afternoon daytime when they're open. And we're going to do uh, a set of our more ambient uh, music, you know, obviously because it's not going to be like a, a late night dance kind of a crowd. So we're going to do our kind of a set of our ambient stuff, more background which will be really cool because we haven't really been doing that kind of thing in a while. We've been doing more, um, I guess, more dance-oriented kind of stuff lately. So it'll be cool to, like, go back to that side of things. And, you know, the other thing is, which I said, uh, you know, the influences for my band Quantum, obvious, you know, music is a huge part, lot, lots of music that I listen to and that I love and it inspires me. But the biggest inspiration for my my band is is really movies uh my love of movies and all of those things that that encompasses so i feel uh really special to be able to be you know uh playing and performing at a place and in an environment that kind of means the world to me so and that is the biggest inspiration for for that band so it'll be very very cool i'm really excited so there'll be some big promotion around that and uh yeah check it out so I have also, today's show is on a movie that I bought at my last trip to Bull Moose. I went to Bull Moose yeah, I get a couple weeks ago, and I'll be going up there again next, next week. I will be going up there on um, Tuesday. So, and I, uh, you know, I've been going there a lot more often than I have in the past. I was always going there usually going every couple of months but i've been going there a lot more so i've been buying tons of movies and i went to bull moose i really love the bull moose in bangor that's probably my favorite place right now and i bought this movie that's like pretty old it's like from 90 uh 1994 and it was super cheap, and that is The Killing of Bobby Green. Uh, this movie is is awesome. Like, never heard of it. I came across it. Totally on a whim. Uh, it came out in 1994, and it was directed by uh, Mick McCleary. And this movie is is like one of the well it's it's funny because on on some levels on some levels this movie is like kind of one of the worst movies I've ever seen like the acting um the sound design like some of the acting is so bad and so terrible uh in in some ways it's one of the worst movies I've ever seen, but I can't, I could not help but totally, but I, I was like, it just sucked me in over and uh, more and more as I watched it. And again, like I've said about the world of like low budget exploitation movies, that's the thing is it's like, it toasts that line, you know, when it's so bad, it's good. And this is one of those movies. This is also part of the whole kind of subgenre in the world of like low budget indie exploitation. This is part of the whole shot on video, which is a big kind of subgenre in within the world of like exploitation, where basically a lot of movies were shot in the eighties and in the nineties where they were intentionally shot uh, on VHS to give the movies a real well, kind of a shitty look, uh, a real grit to them, but it really works. Um, Suburban Sasquatch is probably the best in the genre that I've come across, but it's a huge subgenre, and these movies are incredibly 
incredibly low budget. They usually have some really terrible acting, terrible stories. But again, it's one of those things that they're just so damn fun. And this movie is really awesome. This is uh, one of the best shot on video movies I've seen. It came out in 1994. It's again, it's one of the most low budget movies. But, and again, it's also, for what it's worth, it's kind of one of the worst movies I've ever seen. But because it's so bad, it really works. And it's, but it has some, attributes and some things about it that make this movie actually really really good and better than you would imagine it to be the story is really great it's basically about these high school kids um and one of the main characters he is he had a real uh tragedy in his life basically his father was uh, suicidal for a while and eventually his 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 father kills himself and so it's about him it's about this high school kid coming to terms with i mean it's a pretty heavy duty subject but it's kind of about this 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 kid high school kid coming to terms with his dad's death with his suicide but then he he realizes that um he finds out that there's reasons and that there were, you know, lots of um, situ uh, some terrible situations that the father was in that led to this uh, tragedy and that he felt like the father was could not get out of it. And so, and this was supposedly due to another, another guy that he was friends with, the father. Who is whose son goes to, to to the same high school, and so the two of them there's all of this tension, and they have they never really get along. And in the back of this main character's head, he kind of blames the son, the son's father, for his father's uh, suicide. And so there's like this tension, and and this whole story that involves that. And what they end up deciding to do is, and he, they don't get along. He's kind of a, you know, he's kind of a, they're kind of jerks to each other. And so what they end up deciding to do is kidnap this, this kid. Basically, they want to kidnap this kid and just kind of scare him, but not hurt him, uh, you know, but they just want to like kind of get some, he wants to get some kind of vengeance on him because he blames him essentially for being involved with his father's death. So they end up kidnapping they end up kidnapping him and things go terribly, terribly wrong. And it's, it's very suspenseful. Um, it's like a thriller and it's definitely a horror movie. It gets pretty gory and it gets more and more fucked up. And again, all of that being said, it's very, uh, it's, it's so low budget. It's so bad. Uh, the acting but the story is actually very good. And I found myself, as bad as this movie is, I just, or was, I just found myself being pulled into it more and more. Um, and it was just a cool balance. I was very surprised. And it's hilarious that this movie, it was shot all on, on video. Uh, it's on Blu-ray. And it's got all kinds of special features. There's some really great interviews with the director. It's very, very cool. I started, I finished this last night. I watched this movie last night, and I've been watching the special features, which are fabulous. And uh, this movie's awesome. I totally dig this movie. It's, um, again, part of that kind of subgenre of the exploitation world, uh, you know, movies that are shot on video. And this is, this is awesome. And I bought it for like, uh, four bucks on DVD or Blu-ray. This is a Blu-ray, but it, this movie is totally awesome. Really suspenseful. The other thing that's so funny about this movie and so terrible, but adds a lot of charm to the movie, is the the way the uh, the actors are their voices are dubbed over their uh, over the over the actual film. So like their voices are the dubbing is so bad and the sound is so bad. 
that they all, whenever everyone is talking, they are, uh, everybody sounds like they're coming through a, a giant PA system. So everything's really loud. The mix is terrible. And it's hilarious. It adds this total, like, kind of ridiculous thing to the whole movie. But again, it's one of those things that it's so terrible that I love it. And because it's so bad. And I, there's, like, I guess three or four versions of this movie that were uh, one or two. I guess there was a remake of the movie that came out couple of years ago and then there is a version where the audio is fixed up but i intentionally in, intentionally wanted to watch the original cut of where it's like really bad and it's awesome um it's so great um but i can't re recommend this movie enough super fun totally ridiculous the killing of bobby green 1994 it's a gem so this is jason dean and we will see you next time peace